Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you today that again we can come together to worship as one family in this church. And we thank you for all the blessings, protections over us the whole week. And right now, as we prepare our hearts to listen to your word, we ask you to open up our spirit, and may the word preached shall not return void, but shall accomplish the purposes for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, as usual, our message is based on the gospel reading. And the gospel reading today is talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, you heard earlier that today is Pentecost Sunday. Um, Pentecost is a, a time uh, where we remember, celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus in this passage uh, is talking about that very Holy Spirit. So, uh, with the theme of empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are looking at this gospel reading. Uh, notwithstanding all the negative uh, stories that you've heard or negative experiences that we went through about the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, let us put that aside. Let us look at what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? And what are the works of the Holy Spirit? And this is a very hard thing to preach because uh, I know that when I preach on this topic, you might be, um, you might be asking in your, in your own heart, are you yourself filled by the Spirit? And this is a very interesting part. I won't say challenging, I won't say negative, but challenging, interesting, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Let us look at how Jesus presented the Holy Spirit. With the theme empowered by the Holy Spirit, why is it important that we should be empowered by the Holy Spirit? In summary, um, or in, in, in short, the Holy Spirit is um, like uh, some of you who watch movies, uh, was it um, Star, Star Wars, was it? Star Wars, and each time uh, the leader says to something, someone there, he said, may the force be with you, uh, the kind of, uh, may the force be with you. Well, what do you think that force is? I mean, for them, that film, that force is that power, that unseen power that they have. May that power be with you. Uh, to us, we are not saying that Star Wars is a Christian film, but to us, that is the kind of way of we can relate to that kind of power that is within us. The power, the force that is within us, that is the Holy Spirit. If you look at verses 26 to uh, 27, it says here, when the advocate comes, he's referring to the Holy Spirit here, when the advocate comes, when I will, that with whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So in Jesus' mind, this Holy Spirit, whom he sent from the Father, his main purpose is to testify about Jesus. In other readings, you will find you will read that Jesus said, this Spirit, this Holy Spirit, will not talk about anything but about me. And nothing will come from him if it does not originate from me, Jesus said. And here he says, he comes, but I actually send him to you. So the origin of the, the Holy Spirit is from the Father, but Jesus is sending it to the disciples. So we are not talking about some of those uh, debate, you know. Um, you might as well just read it about yourself. But this is how uh, our triune God uh, appears to us. Uh, Jesus said, I will send this Holy Spirit from the Father to you. He is the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father and Look at this. He said, he will testify about me. 
So anything that the Holy Spirit works must point people to Jesus. Uh, for us who are in the uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit, who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, who works miraculous powers, who cast out demons, um, things like that, you know, in all those things, it must point people to Jesus, who else it's nothing else but other foreign powers. Jesus said, this Holy Spirit will testify about me. And, and to the disciples, he said, you also must be testified about me. Because you have been with me for, for, from the beginning. You, when, when you receive this, you will also testify about me. Now, this is the promise that Jesus has given. And, and, and if you read in Acts, you know, when the disciples were gathered, in a room in Jerusalem, a, the wind came and, and in tongues of flames uh, came down upon the disciples and they began to speak in tongues, in different languages. And all the people around there were so amazed how come these disciples of Jesus who had no training at all are talking about God in our own languages? from foreign parts gathered in Jerusalem. Um, and then Peter said, look, they are not drunk. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is Pentecost. And today we are celebrating Pentecost. So let us look at the positive, indeed it is positive, works of the Holy Spirit. We begin, I begin by saying that the Holy Spirit is not a foreign force. It is promised by Jesus himself. We read that in verse 26 to 27. The exciting part perhaps for us is to know what is the work of the Holy Spirit. Because this is where a lot of people have different emphasis, different understanding, or different negative uh, experiences about the Holy Spirit. So we base today on what Jesus said the works of the Holy Spirit is. Let us look at verse 4 to 15. Chapter 15, verse 27 to 26 says that Jesus himself promised to send the Holy Spirit from the Father to the disciples and to us today. Verse 14 to 15 talks about the works of the Holy Spirit, the activity of the Holy Spirit. You know, in, in other parts of the scripture, uh, when Peter uh, met with some believers, uh, he asked them, you know, have you been baptized? And they said, no, we have not been baptized in the name of Jesus. So Peter baptized them, and, and what happened? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So whoever is or been baptized by the Holy Spirit, our Anglican doctrine is, if you have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our teaching is you have the Holy Spirit. The question is whether you allow it to work out His power in you. It is in you. Do you allow it? If you allow it to work in you, then all the miraculous part, all the good things that the Holy Spirit is doing, people will see it in you. It doesn't mean that you will be jumping around and shouting here and there. It doesn't mean that. But it just means that when you share the gospel, there is power within you. There is something aura within you that when people listen to you, they listen to something, another uh, power speaking. It's not you, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, testifying about Jesus. Anyway, let's look at verse 8. Jesus said, when this Holy Spirit comes upon you, uh, verse 8, when he comes, that is the Holy Spirit, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. We have a lot, to, a lot of things to say here, but let us uh, focus on three words. Sin, 
um, let me look at the verse again, yeah? Jesus said, he will come and prove the world to be in the wrong about sin, first, sin, secondly, and righteousness, and third, judgment. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said. Now, what does it mean? It means, one, to convict the world of sin. How can the Holy Spirit work to convict the world with sin? Basically, it means when the Holy Spirit reveals the truth about human sinfulness, about human rebellion to God, about human rejecting God, when the Holy Spirit comes through you, witnessing the Word of God, talking about God's goodness, the person listening to you will come to realize and be convicted that in his own self, he cannot come any near to God. And it is you who is witnessing to that person when you evangelize a person. The power within you, the force within you, uh, um, borrowing from Star Wars, the force within you, the power within you helps that person to open up his mind. Oh dear, I am not worthy to be with God. Uh, all this while I've been rejecting and running away from God, apparently because I have sinned. The only way that I can be um, restored before God is to come in repentance and, in, and then receive forgiveness. So when we, when we share the word of God to anyone else, it is not so much that we are the one who brings that person to repent, repentance. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Convict that person, convict the world of his human rebellion against God. And what does it do? It shines in the heart of the person, illuminates the hearts of the person, exposing his need for repentance and forgiveness. And there you are. It is not your job. It is not your work. You are just an instrument. God is working through you, the Holy Spirit. So isn't it good? And if it is good, why is it that some people reject the work of the Holy Spirit? It is because they have negative experiences about them. But Jesus said, this is what the Holy Spirit is doing. Secondly, about judgment, about, about righteousness. It says in verse 10, about righteousness, when I come, when he comes, he will tell the world about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will talk about what is right. He will talk about the standard of God that is right, that is righteousness, what is right. And when the Holy Spirit comes and works through you, we become that instrument where we speak about the right things of God. And that person listening to us, Jesus said, will be convicted of God's righteousness. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And it is good, isn't it? Because God uses us in that way. And therefore, Pentecost Sunday is something that we all celebrate. The third one is judgment, verse 11. Uh, about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Now, how does it work out? That when the Holy Spirit comes, it will convict the world with, uh, of sin and of righteousness, and the third one is judgment. Now, when the Holy Spirit convicts a person of judgment, it means that it reveals in that person that he cannot by himself win his battle, so to speak. He cannot by himself gain anything good. He is by himself being judged. And that conviction only comes when the Holy Spirit works. If the Holy Spirit doesn't work, that conviction will not come to him. 
And that is why if we want this world to be convicted of sin, righteousness is judgment, we have to be witnesses for God, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because that is the only way the world is made to aware of its present status before God. Jesus said that you know, when this Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. So those are what Jesus said that talks about the works of the Holy Spirit. The rest of the works of the Holy Spirit you can see in the lives of people around us. When people minister to you in the power of the Holy Spirit, what will happen? Your hearts are convicted to believe in the power of God. What will happen? Some things will happen like you'll be speaking in tongues like, like the, the disciples in Acts in Jerusalem. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. When the power of the Holy Spirit works in you, you will, you will um, overcome spiritual attack and sp spiritual domin domineering. You will cast out evil spirits. Um, and this is one thing that is exciting. Um, we are not expecting every day to be involved in the ministry of deliverance. But when the time comes, when a person needs to be delivered, you must be there and help that person to be delivered. A person can be so quiet, so tame, but deep within that person, perhaps there's a, there's a force, there's a spirit that blocks that person to know God more. A person can be tame and nice, but deep down in him, there is that rebelliousness against God. And therefore, he cannot come before God, nearer to God. How can that person be renewed? Um, people who are believers, people who have the Holy Spirit within them, they have that power. And when, when you pray for deliverance, that person is delivered. It may be soon enough. It, can, it may take a long time. It may take years for you to do that. But at the end of it, victory is yours. And you are more than conquerors. Brothers and sisters of Christ, what else the Holy Spirit can do to us? I want to share with you several ones. Number one, when the Holy Spirit works within us, our characters are transformed. It doesn't have to be a violent transformation. It can be a gradual transformation. It can be something that happens gradually. But your character is transformed to become more Christ-like, more like Christ. When we yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we will experience growth gradually. Some people change, you know, in a way that is unimaginable, like overnight, so to speak. That person is changed. Praise God for that person who changed so drastically. But some, for some of us, perhaps, the change will take time. So if we see a person who doesn't grow spiritually, we are not there to condemn that person. We are there to help that person to grow because we know the Holy Spirit works in, in mysterious ways. But at the end of it, we believe that person will be transformed. Secondly, renewal of the mind. A person whose mind is renewed, is renewed by the Holy Spirit will, will see the world in a new perspective. Positive, Christ-like, kingdom mentality, uh, he will speak that way. But if a person who does not have that empowerment of the Holy Spirit, I don't want to say, you know what kind of language that person will use. But if a person is empowered, filled with the Holy Spirit, you know what kind of language that person uses. Because the mind is renewed. If the mind is renewed, the heart also renewed, everything is transformed, 
our language become Christ-like. And that is amazing, isn't it? To see how people change their language, how people change their um, words, how people change their terminology, how people change their phrases uh, into more Christ-like. And a person who is in the verge of spiritual death Listen to this person empowered by the Holy Spirit will become alive because you give hope to that person. But if a person who is near condemnation meet a Christian and doesn't give that hope to him, then that person says, I don't need you anymore. The church, the people outside the church are better than the people inside the church. So why should I enter the church? Some people always say that. And this is a challenge for us. You know. Empowerment and spiritual warfare. Yes, spiritual warfare. We all are involved in spiritual warfare one way or another. Spiritual warfare, warfare is a struggle within us that we cannot see by our eyes alone. We have to interpret that person in spiritual ways, looking at that person, what happened inside of him. And we can tell whether this person is in a spiritual warfare or not. Whatever struggle a person is going through, that is warfare. If his warfare, if his struggles is visible, we can help visibly. A person who is poor, we can help a poor person because we can see it. But a poor person cannot be just merely physically poor. He can be spiritually poor too. A person can, can manifest his own life physically and needs some kind of transformation. And if we can see what happens physically, he is sick, we can give medicine. But if he's spiritually sick, he needs spiritual medication. And that is where we are coming in, spiritual warfare as believers in Christ. So, each and every one of us are involved in our own spiritual warfare. We need to win over our own struggles, our own inner struggles. And we need that Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will enter into every realms of our lives. Whether it is career, whether it is family, whether it is children, work, anything. Spiritual power can enter that realm and bring us out of that warfare victoriously. So you see a person are going through some kind of internal struggles and you have been following that person for years trying to help him out or help her out and yet you cannot see any progress maybe it is because his problem is not physical his problem is not medical his problem is spiritual and we need empowerment to enter that kind of spiritual warfare that is holy spirit Jesus said he will tell you, guide you into all truth. And all truth in Jesus will be our own spiritual weapon. So, we have seen that, what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, the role of the Holy Spirit, and what we can see if it works in us. The third one is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Bible used the word fruit, single. Um, not fruits of the Holy Spirit, but fruit of the Holy Spirit. One fruit of the Holy Spirit, but inside there, there are nine, isn't it? Um, fruit. Um, and that is where it says, those who have the Holy Spirit will also have that fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can read that in Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
This is Pentecost Sunday. We who are filled with the Holy Spirit also bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if we bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we are like branches, Jesus said in our last previous sermon. If we bear fruits, we can also be pruned. So by pruning, we bear much more fruits. And if we bear much more fruit, we will bring glory to God. Why not? Because, number one, we reflect Christ in our life. If the fruit of the Spirit is in us, we reflect Christ in our life. Our relationship also becomes uh, better. Certainly, it will affect, impact our relationship if the Holy Spirit works within us. If we have the Holy Spirit, we can navigate life better, I think. We can navigate life stronger, I think. We can navigate life in all this problem with confidence, I believe, because the Spirit will lead us into all truth. And we also are given power to witness the Word of God. Have you ever um, experienced a time in your ministry, in your life, where you have the urge to share the word of God with another person. But you didn't do it. And you came home feeling very um, guilty about it. Why didn't I share? And there was this, this one person who shared with us about prayer. He has that urge to pray for this, this sick person. He was urged to pray that he will live on. But he did not. And he came back home feeling very guilty. Much more guilty because that person died eventually. And he said, if I ever went to that person and prayed for healing, maybe that person will, will not die. The impression he got, the hint he got, um, the feeling he got, the strong mind he got was to pray for healing. But he did not. And he felt so guilty. Have you ever felt that kind of urge to share a word of encouragement to another person? Just the word of God. And that person may be lifted up because you share. And that is what I mean, empowered to witness. In conclusion, those who follow, those who receive, those who have possessed the Holy Spirit in all his life, one thing will happen. He honors God. He honors God. In his service, in his ministry, in his family, he honors God. And for those, who, for those of us here, all of us have families. You know, if we display honoring God in our family, you are actually preparing a generation that will honor God in the future. Um, for those of us, perhaps, who are in your golden age, you still have people whom you can encounter and build another generation that honors God. It starts with you. If God is with us, who can be against us? So, brothers and sisters in Christ, I think this is the positive aspect of the works of the Holy Spirit. So what we should do we should lean on to God. We should ask God to guide us. We should ask God to protect us. But with this one thing, we should ask God to empower us with the Holy Spirit. And as you do that, you will experience the true abundance of Christian life that Jesus promised, the works of the Holy Spirit in you. You are more than conqueror, the Bible says, because the Holy Spirit is within you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have revealed to us the power that enables us to live out our Christian life as well as to enable us to serve in our church, in our community. We pray, Lord, that every day in each of our work that we do, your Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.